In my years of study, I have become convinced that the early records are not myths, but that they refer to another location that fits all of these descriptions. I believe that Muhammad was born and raised in another place, and that Muslims are facing the wrong direction when they pray. Selon l'histoire islamique généralement acceptée, la Kaaba était un sanctuaire majeur dans la ville de la Mecque et l'intérêt du pèlerinage en Arabie, un bon point de départ pour étudier le pèlerinage avant la fondation de l'islam. Cette Umrah avant Mahomet était à un moment le point focal du pèlerinage arabe qui était un lieu connu comme le lieu de rassemblement interdit. Cet endroit présentait de nombreuses idoles païennes. In order for us to understand what was happening in pre-Islamic Arabia, we need to understand the importance of holy places in ancient Arabia. From ancient times, Middle Eastern religions have equated gods with regions rather than being universal. Modern readers of history have long been influenced by Greek and Roman concepts of the pantheon of gods and have failed to realize the significance that the ancient Arabs applied to gods of specific regions. In the eyes of the ancient Arabs, there were gods who lived in Mesopotamia, gods who lived in Egypt, and gods who lived in Greece, and so on. Arab merchants passing through an area would respect the local gods, They were not opposed to gods of different places. What they were opposed to was the representation of a god in human or animal form. They preferred to use geometric shapes. For instance, here is a god in the shape of a block. That one over there is shaped as a triangle. Each of these gods were considered local gods and must be respected when passing through their territory. Une telle vue de la religion conduit naturellement à accepter que les territoires et que les lieux soient sacrés pour des lieux spécifiques, de sorte que la zone entourant un temple tel qu'une vallée particulière ou un lieu désert pouvait être considéré comme sacré. Elle aurait une enceinte où les gens pouvaient se rassembler, même avec leurs ennemis, et être en sécurité parce que la violence était interdite dans l'enceinte sacrée. When tourists enter the majestic beauty of Wadi Rum here in southern Jordan, they're so often taken up with the exquisite beauty of this valley and the rugged mountains that they miss a temple dedicated to the goddess Lat, or Alat as some call her. This Nabataean temple had a sacred area. It was located in front of the temple, with the mountains marking off the sacred area. Avant, dans l'Islam, les Arabes étaient divisés en plusieurs groupes. Ils adoraient différents dieux et se disputaient souvent sur des questions tribales. Ce qui les tenait ensemble, c'était le pèlerinage vers un ancien lieu de rencontre commun. Le Coran appelle ce Majid Al-Aram, ou le lieu de rassemblement interdit Masjid, signifie réunir et est traduit par le mot mosquée. Avant l'islam, il n'y avait pas de mosquée, de sorte que le Majid n'était qu'un lieu de rassemblement. Le lieu de rassemblement interdit était un lieu sacré de refuge et de sécurité où les activités régulières cessaient et que la violence était interdite ou haram. Le concept de haram ou interdit est très fort dans l'islam. Allah and it was a sanctuary before and will be so after. None is allowed to uproot its shrubs or cut its trees or hunt its game. So we have two descriptions of the original holy city of Islam. It was a haram place where killing was forbidden and it was the focus of the pilgrimage for many centuries before the founding of Islam. Now look here, much of the graffiti found throughout the Negev and southern Jordan was written by people on pilgrimage to the ancient city of Petra in southern Jordan. 
Thousands of people scratched their names and messages on rocks as they made their way to Petra for pilgrimage. This creates a problem for us. Mecca is unknown in maps and literature before and during the rise of Islam. The descriptions, such as the center of the trade route, the mother of all cities, and the focal point of the ancient pilgrimage, do not fit. How can we solve this? The answer to that comes from Islam itself. وهناك مكان في المسجد يسمى المحراب الذي الإمام يوقف فيه ويصلي يغود المصلين ولكن في الأيام الماضية ما كان موجود هذا المحراب ولكن كان في حائط يتجه صوب القبلة وكان المبنى بالكامل مبني باتجاه صوب القبلة. In Islam, it is universally understood that the Qibla is towards Mecca in Saudi Arabia. No one questions the direction of the Qibla today. However, the Quran tells Muslims they have a Qibla. The text of the Quran does not give the name of the city to which prayer was originally made. It only mentions Masjid al-Haram or the forbidden gathering place. Muslims believe they originally prayed towards Jerusalem. According to Islamic sources, in 624 AD, Muhammad changed the Qibla to Mecca. Muhammad revealed this in Surah 2 of the Quran. Thus we appointed the Qibla to you. Indeed, it was a momentous change, except to those guided by Allah. Allah would never make your faith of no effect. Now shall we turn you to a Qibla that shall please you. Turn then your face in the direction of the Masjid al-Haram. Wherever you are, turn your faces in that direction. As a historian of the Arabian Peninsula, I've always been interested in finding the location of the original Qibla. What direction did Muhammad pray towards before the Qibla was changed? Was it Jerusalem as some claim? Was it Syria as some claim? Or was it some other direction? Si nous devions faire cette étude il y a 100 ans, il faudrait une quantité incroyable de travail et de recherche. Nous devrions parcourir le monde à la recherche de sites anciens pour trouver des premières mosquées dans l'islam. Maintenant, nous pouvons faire le travail de toute une vie. Google Earth nous permet de trouver sur la Terre des sites à partir de l'espace et les sites web comme ArcNet peuvent combiner la recherche de centaines d'étudiants et de professeurs. Nous pouvons examiner les structures en fonction de divers critères que nous choisissons, des bâtiments islamiques regroupés par date dans une liste chronologique, puis déterminer quand elles ont été construites. Vérifier leur direction de Qibla en utilisant Google Earth et ainsi déterminer quand la direction de la Qibla a changé pour pointer vers la Mecque. Cela nous donnera des données solides pour travailler. Now, determining the Qibla direction is not an exact science. Some of the early mosques like this one are not exactly square. So researchers need to find the Qibla wall and project 90 degrees from that wall. Because early buildings were not square, we cannot use the side walls or the back walls. This is the mihrab of an old mosque. The early Arabs set the Qibla direction using the stars, and they were very accurate. The best way to determine the Qibla direction is to visit the mosque and use an actual accurate GPS unit. Not every mosque can be used for this study. Many of them were totally reconstructed over time, so much so that it is no longer possible to determine their original Qibla direction. However, a number of mosques survive. For instance, there is a mosque called the Mosque of the Two Qiblas in Medina. Islamic history tells us that it was in this very mosque that the companion leading prayers was told of the Qibla change. So he turned around and started praying towards Mecca. The question is, where did he originally face? Muslims have a ready answer. He prayed towards Jerusalem. Now today, the Mosque of the Two Qiblas faces Mecca. But in 1987, the mosque was completely torn down so it could be rebuilt. During the construction process, the old foundation was revealed, and they discovered that it did have a Qibla wall that did indeed face north, generally towards Jerusalem. 
and so Muslims believe originally the Qibla was towards Jerusalem. Il y a un moyen simple de mettre cela à l'épreuve. Si nous abordons les premières mosquées construites là où nous pouvons identifier leur direction de prière, nous pouvons les tracer sur une carte et voir si leurs lignes convergent. Nous trouverons l'une des trois choses qu'ils indiquent différentes directions, que tous pointent vers Jérusalem ou que tous désignent un autre endroit. Après la mosquée des deux Kibla en Arabie Saoudite, il y a encore 11 mosquées suivantes qui peuvent être recherchées, situées en Chine, Égypte, sud de la Jordanie, Liban, Jordanie centrale, Yémen, Israël, Irak, Jérusalem, Cisjordanie et enfin au Liban. Donc, si on va dans l'ordre où elles ont été construites, la deuxième mosquée survivante a été construite à Ganjou en Chine. Ganjou est le nom moderne de ce que l'on appelait la ville de Canton. When Marco Polo reached this city in 1300 AD, he discovered over 100,000 Arab and Persian merchants living there. You see, the Arabs had been trading with the Chinese for hundreds and hundreds of years. This is all well documented. And so Abu Waqqas, an uncle of Muhammad, traveled to China on a trade mission. And according to Chinese manuscripts, He built a mosque for the Arabs in Canton in 627 AD, or six years after the founding of Islam. I personally examined this mosque and used a GPS unit to determine the mosque's Qibla direction. What I found was surprising. This mosque does not face Mecca. It faces 12 degrees north of Mecca, meaning that it does not face Jerusalem either. Its Qibla passes south of Jerusalem. La prochaine mosquée a été construite en 641 après Jésus-Christ, environ 20 ans après la fondation de l'Islam, dans une ville qui commence juste à l'extérieur du Caire. Cette mosquée a été reconstruite et agrandie plusieurs fois, de sorte qu'aujourd'hui, la fondation d'origine n'est plus évidente. However, a description of the original ground plan of the mosque survives, and the Islamic records tell us that the first Qibla pointed east and later had to be corrected towards the south, towards Mecca. Le prochain bâtiment islamique survivant est le Palais Omeyyad, construit ici dans le sud de la Jordanie. Around 700 AD, or about 80 years after the founding of Islam, the Abbas family built a large manor house here. This house had no special mosque area. Rather, the faithful would line up here in the courtyard to pray. This house has Qibla direction, but it is not towards Jerusalem. L'année suivante, une nouvelle mosquée a été construite à Baalbek au Liban. Remarquez que sa Qibla ne pointe pas vers la Mecque. One year later, the Umayyads built a large and impressive mosque here on the citadel in Amman, Jordan. This mosque points south. Mecca is over there. Quelques années après, en 705 après Jésus-Christ ou 84 ans après la fondation de l'Islam, les musulmans ont construit la grande mosquée de Sana dans la capitale du Yémen. Alors que cette mosquée devrait pointer en direction de la Mecque, elle pointe à l'ouest de Jérusalem. L'année suivante, en 706 après Jésus-Christ, les dirigeants musulmans d'Omeyyad ont construit le Kirba al minya un grand complexe de palais en Israël sur les rives de la Galilée. Ce complexe de palais avait une pièce spécifiquement utilisée comme mosquée selon l'inscription dans une passerelle. Elle a été construite 87 ans après la fondation de l'Islam par le souverain musulman Al-Walid. Ce bâtiment et sa mosquée ne sont pas pointés vers Jérusalem. Cette même année, les musulmans ont également construit la mosquée occidentale en Irak. À l'origine, des archéologues ont affirmé que cette mosquée indiquait Jérusalem. Cependant, d'autres recherches ont montré que cette mosquée pointe vers le sud de Jérusalem. La mosquée suivante est la mosquée Al-Aqsa à Jérusalem, et non la moindre. Cette mosquée n'est pas le temple du Dôme, mais plutôt l'ancienne mosquée au sud du Dôme. Cette mosquée est déjà à Jérusalem, il y a aussi une Qibla, mais elle ne pointe pas vers la Mecque. La mosquée suivante, 
où nous sommes rendus, a été construite en 724 après Jésus-Christ, 103 ans après la fondation de l'Islam. C'est le Kirbat al-Mafjar, près de Jéricho dans la vallée du Jourdain. Ce palais a été construit vers la fin de la dynastie Omeyyade. En regardant le plancher, on peut voir que le palais et sa mosquée fait face au sud plutôt que vers la Mecque. La même année, une mosquée a été construite à Anja à environ 58 km de Beyrouth. Elle a été construite près de la fin de la période Omeyyade et pas plus que 30 ans plus tard, elle est tombée en ruine et a finalement été abandonnée. Elle n'a jamais été reconstruite. Nous pouvons voir facilement et déterminer la direction de la Qibla qui ne pointe pas vers la Mecque ni Jérusalem. Maintenant, mettons tout cela sur une carte. Le résultat est incroyable. Pendant les 100 premières années de l'Islam, 100% de tous les mosquées survivantes nous ont situés jusqu'à présent face à un endroit dans le sud de la Jordanie plutôt que vers la Mecque. Du nord, sud, est et les mosquées de l'ouest font face à un endroit. Ce n'est pas une petite erreur dans la détermination de la direction de la Qibla. Elle désigne tout simplement un seul endroit. Directly under this point is the ancient city of Petra. This is a city that is well known to us today. It is a popular tourist site. Tourists come from all over the world to marvel at the great temples and the monuments in this city. Could it be that Petra is the mother of all cities described in the Quran? It was the focus of the ancient Arab pilgrimage. So could Petra also be the birthplace of Muhammad? and the founding city of Islam. Then, قريب يعني أنت تقول إن البترة لكن البخاري يقول إنها هي القدس. فشلون تبين نفكر في هذا الأمر؟ شلون تبين نقبل هذا الشيء؟ عن البخاري قال إن القدس. Every good Muslim tells me that Muslims used to pray towards Jerusalem. They know this because Bukhari tells them this, and I agree. Bukhari says it was Jerusalem. But Bukhari is writing some 200 years after Muhammad, and he's writing more than 100 years after the Qibla change took place. So he's not an eyewitness. He's just collecting what people are remembering. And he actually notes several conflicting ideas that were circulating at the time. While some people were offering morning prayer at Quba, a man came to them and said, a Quranic order has been revealed to Allah's apostle tonight that he should face the Kaaba at Mecca. So you too should turn your faces towards it. At that moment, their faces were towards Syria. And on hearing this, they turned towards the Kaaba at Mecca. I believe that originally Muhammad, while living in Medina, prayed north towards Petra, which was in the Roman province of Syria. By the time Bukhari was collecting his stories, people had forgotten Petra and everyone remembered that their great-grandparents prayed towards Syria. Then, the Quran says that the Masjid al-Haram is in Bekka. So, where is the real place in Bekka? Those who bring up the argument about Bekka raise an interesting point. I agree that in Islamic literature, the name Bekka is synonymous with the first holy city of Islam. When Muhammad was a young man, the people decided to rebuild the Kaaba. In the rubble, they found several building blocks with inscriptions written in Syriac, the language of the Nabataeans. They found a Jew who could translate it for them. I am Allah, the Lord of Bika. I created it on the day that I created heaven and earth and formed the sun and moon. And I surrounded it with seven pious angels. It will stand whilst its two mountains stand as a blessing to its people with milk and water. The word Becca is an ancient Semitic word, which means to weep or lament. If a location was assigned the title Becca, it would mean the place of weeping. The name Becca has never been used of Jerusalem. It appears only once in the Bible in Psalm 84. Here it is used in reference to a valley of weeping. But the Quran also speaks of a valley of weeping, where Hagar was weeping over Ishmael. 
The Quran places this story in Becca, which is the early name for the place where the Kaaba was built. Surely this location was not Jerusalem, which is built on top of a mountain and not in a valley. I think the answer is quite simple. There were many major earthquakes in Petra, such as the one in 551 AD, only 19 years before Muhammad was born. We are told that during that earthquake, much of Petra was destroyed. Petra could have been called the Valley of Becca because so many people were killed over so many years from all the earthquakes. Si Petra est la ville sainte de l'Islam, il devrait y avoir une preuve de la tribu de Mahomet, les Quraysh autour de Petra. Si Dan Gibson peut trouver la tribu de Mahomet, il appuiera grandement sa théorie selon laquelle Mahomet était originaire de la région de Petra et non de la Mecque. Long ago, this was known as the city of Hawar, or Humayma as it is known today. Archaeologists have uncovered a farmhouse belonging to the Abbasid family and a mosque built some time later. When the Muslims of Iraq defeated the Umayyads of Damascus, they wanted a member of Muhammad's family to support and legitimize their revolt. And so they came here to Humayma, 27 miles from Petra. It was here that they found Muhammad's family and the Quraysh tribe. They didn't go to Mecca in Saudi Arabia or Medina. They came here to Humayma, 27 miles outside of Petra. It was here that they found the Quraysh tribe and the family of Muhammad, not in Saudi Arabia. <laughs> 